What if I told you that scientists could control your brain simply by shining a light on it? With optogenetics, scientists could one day manipulate neurons in your brain just by using light. It all started here. As you can see, I haven't cleaned my fish tank in a few months and it's developed a bunch of green algae. In 2003, scientists discovered a new protein that would convert light into electricity. So here we have a green algae cell. If we zoom into its cell membrane, we see that there's a protein called channel rhodopsin 2. When light shines on this protein, it allows its positive ions, such as sodium, to flow through. This opening of channels is extremely similar to how neurons communicate through electrical signals. So let's take a look at a neuron. So a neuron is a special type of cell that's found in your nervous system throughout your entire body. It has a long axon that has a bunch of ion channels on it. Whenever there's any kind of stimulus, the ion channels will open and allow positive ions to flow through. This creates a chain reaction that causes an electrical signal to run down the axon, and this is called an action potential. Scientists realized that if they were able to take channel rhodopsin 2 from green algae and put it inside of a neuron, they'd be able to control when the cell activates because whenever they shine a light on it, positive ions would flow into the cell and cause an action potential. So the next step would be to incorporate these proteins into animal cells. To do this, scientists use a method called gene therapy. Gene therapy is a type of genetic engineering where scientists take the gene from one organism and place it into another. In optogenetics, scientists take the gene from green algae that codes for channel rhodopsin 2 and then they put it into a virus or vector. The virus is then injected or allowed to infect the target animal, in this case, a mouse. After the virus infects the mouse, it'll enter its brain and deliver the gene. Because the gene coded for channel rhodopsin 2, the brain will start producing channel rhodopsin 2 as well. This would cause these neurons to fire whenever light touches it. Currently, this procedure has only been completed on mice. Scientists deliver light to the brain by attaching a fiber optic cable to the mouse's head, which delivers light whenever the scientists need it. Optogenetics offers two advantages over current brain research methods. First of all, it has high spatial resolution, which means scientists can pinpoint exactly which areas of the brain they want to activate. It also has high temporal resolution, which means that the neurons only fire whenever there's light. This is kind of like a on-off switch for neurons. Optogenetics has many possible applications. By systematically turning cells on or off, scientists can determine which neurons contribute to certain behaviors or diseases. For example, scientists have already determined the neurons that cause a mouse to start eating. When scientists used an optic fiber cable to shine light onto optogenetically modified neurons, they found that the mouse would start eating. This could provide clues about brain pathways and their associated diseases, such as depression and OCD, or would allow scientists to develop more specific drugs to treat neurological disorders like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Ultimately, optogenetics represents a new and innovative way of learning about the brain and treating brain disorders. By further developing this technology, we'd be one step closer to finding cures for intractable diseases that affect millions of people every day. Who would have thought that studying green algae would lead to advances in neuroscience? I think this is a testament to supporting life sciences and scientific research in all areas of life, no matter how insignificant they may seem. Thanks for watching.